Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So in this video we will be repairing not one but two Logitech D700s and they have the exact same problem so I'll just be showing one of them. So this is going to be a quick video today because I only have 15 minutes left on my SD card and uh, let's try and see if we can do it in that. So the problem with these mice is that uh, the left mouse button uh, is very worn out. It's basically double clicking when you single click and if you try to drag something it will drop it halfway across the screen and it simply doesn't work. Apart from that it's a very nice mouse and I kinda like it so I wanna repair it. And the other one is my brother's mouse and uh, we bought them the same day so uh, yeah they both failed. So the problem with these uh, mice it's pretty simple. Uh, the only thing that it can be really is the micro switch underneath the button here that is worn out. And to change it we have to take the mouse apart of course. I already went and opened it once to check which exact micro switch it was so that I could order some. Uh, you want to remove the pads on the bottom of the mouse of course and you might be able to reuse them if you're careful but they are very cheap on eBay so if you just order a couple uh, then you should be fine. And I didn't bother to put all the screws in. <laughs> so we'll open it up. The screws are identical on the bottom here so you don't have to keep track of which ones goes where. Then we should be able to open it. And we have this connector here that you want to unplug. And that's as far as I got last time. So these switches are Omron switches and I went and ordered some. The exact part number is written on the side in here. And I got the replacement here. But I don't know if they changed these throughout the revisions of the mouse, so if you have a bad mouse you want to repair, you might want to check if your switches are identical before you order them. But anyway, let's uh, continue. So it looks like we have to remove the mouse wheel assembly to get to these screws down under here. And there's a couple of screws in this part down here as well, I don't know if it shows up on the camera. And we can't just take out the whole board because it's screwed in underneath here. And to remove this, there's this uh, locking pin that goes in here. We can remove that. And then we can lift this up, it looks like. And it goes out. And there's these two small springs here that you don't want to lose, so we better remove those. And now we can get to these four screws here. And this whole plastic bracket here comes off. And the metal one in the front as well. And of course a good trick when you're taking stuff like this apart is to put it down on the table kind of like you took it off so you always remember what goes where. But anyway, this is the switch that we want to replace. Uh, even though we unscrewed it, we can't lift it up because the two balls are soldered together with pin headers in here. They didn't put a connector so we can't just unplug it. I'm not sure the camera will pick up the... yeah, you can see them there, the pins. So we'll have to desolder that. And to do that we'll need some solder, perhaps some solder wick, or a uh, one of these solder suckers, and possibly some flux of some kind. You can use a flux pen or one of these bottles. What I like to do, especially on older products, is to go and apply some fresh solder to the joints. And also I'm using leaded solder. The stuff that's on there is probably, uh, or it is, lead-free sort of. And the leaded 
it's just much easier to work with. Then I usually give it some flux and then use the solder braid or solder wick. The trick to use solder wick is to buy the expensive stuff. Don't buy the cheap one on eBay, it doesn't really work. Uh, the expensive stuff has very good flux and that's really the key uh, for the solder wick to work. And also kind of what you don't want to do is this like that. Just put it down and put the soldering iron on top and I mean you can do that if you have a very powerful iron with a huge tip on it but but if you're using a small electronics iron it's probably better to uh, heat up the stuff that you want to desolder quickly and then move on and use the edge of the solder wick. But using the solar sucker is also uh, working reasonably. So I just went over it again with the solder wick and it's come loose it looks like. Yeah, so there we have it. And we want to change the left switch here. The other one is probably fine. It doesn't get used nearly as much. So we'll set this aside. So that's it. It's a bit easier to do when you don't have a camera in the way. Just uh, check the orientation here before we pull it out. And we put the new one in the same way. Try to get it somewhat straight. Give it a bit of flux. And we should be able to just tag it in place like that. Looks like it's pretty straight now, so we'll go ahead and solder it in. I've got a rack with some alcohol on it and we're just going to wipe away the excess flux. And if you have been using the solder sucker, you might get tiny little specks of tin or solder like this. Uh, you just want to blow those away so they don't short anything up. And now we can put the board back in. And a bit more cleaning. So that's a bit better. So now we just have to put everything back together. and uh, the tiny springs and the wheel goes back in here and in goes the little pin And it looks like it's working. 
So now we just put in the connector for the side buttons, like that. And I notice this arm here can swing around, so you just want to keep sure it sits in place before you close the lid. And now we just put in all the screws here. And the battery, and uh, hopefully nothing will blow up or explode. At least we got the two lights on the side showing that it's uh, turned on. So now I'll just test it with the computer and see that it works before I put the pads on here because uh, they're not easily removable and also I want to put in the last screws of course. So I went in and uh, tested the mouse and it works wonderfully again. Um, and the pads that I got are these. They're just from eBay and they were very cheap, like three dollars or something. Uh, so now we can go and apply those, but before we do that, I just want to clean up the last bits of the old glue residue here. So it looks like it comes with two sets. Uh, I don't remember it saying that when I bought it, so uh, that just makes it even cheaper. Well, it actually also came with some alcohol pads. Uh, I'll see if this can dissolve it, else I'll just uh, go and find something else. Yeah, it removes it just fine. Almost like they were meant for it. <laughs> so we'll just let that dry for a few seconds and uh, we'll put the new pads on. Uh, perhaps I should turn it off. <laughs> the range is quite good on these. Oh, they're nice and smooth actually. I think they're, they're quite good. Anyway, we were able to fix a nice mouse for about two or three dollars in parts. I think the switches were around a dollar each and uh, and yeah I don't remember exactly the price of these but I got two sets uh, so I have a spare for when uh, the switch fails in another five years. I'm glad I was able to fix this mouse because it is my favorite mouse. I kind of like it. It's very ergonomic and it's it's nice to use. And now I don't have to go and spend a hundred dollars on a new one. So if you like the video please give it the thumbs up or if it inspired you to go and fix your old mouse. Anyway thanks for watching the video and I will see you.